Well, Shane, I'll, I'll, I'll get us started. Uh, first off, congrats on the win. Um, what, uh, have you had a chance to, to go back and watch the, uh, the film of, of the game from uh, the other day? And, and what, were you, what did you think of it if you, if you did do, get a chance to do that? Yeah, I watched it. I actually did watch it back. Um, it was a, I think it was just one of those games where we came out. I mean, it was funny actually like being at the back and watching some of the combination play from Jao Paulo and Nico and Raul and these guys. It was, I was sitting back there like, wow, we are, uh, we are playing pretty good right now. You know, you could just kind of feel it. There was, there was, I mean, until that penalty that we conceded, I felt like we were in complete control of the game. And so I think that gave everybody a lot of confidence to just play, play free. Obviously, it was a playoff game, so there was a lot of sort of intensity and emotion going into it. But the way we came out, it kind of just settled everybody right down. Um, obviously, Vela missing the penalty was a huge moment, I think, because – if he scores that, it's kind of like, okay, wow, well, we're, you know, we're in a dogfight here, but Steph makes a big save and it, and it just was, it kind of reiterated the fact like we're in control of this game. Like uh, obviously the conceding the, the, the goal kind of later on kind of brought a little bit about that, but we had played so well for so long. I think we were, we were fairly confident that we could see the game out, but yeah, it was just, it was a good night for us. You know, I thought the ball moved really well. Um, we kind of were able to de defend higher up the field and make it really tough for them. And obviously they were missing some key pieces, but we took advantage of that. When you watch a game like that, do you, do you look at it only from like an analytical perspective of like you're, you're looking for what you did specifically or what they were doing, or do you actually allow yourself to, you know, get into the mind of a, of a soccer fan and just kind of watch it. And I'm wondering if a game like that, is actually fun to rewatch. I mean, as it, it's fun because we won. <laughs> the games that you lose, it's brutal to rewatch. I mean, but because you know, kind of the emotion during it, you know, you can kind of, you know, I mean, that's kind of the beauty of playing in it because you know how you're feeling during these specific moments, like a moment that looks just so normal on a, when you're watching it back. But in that moment you were like, Oh wow, that was a, I was a little nervous about that play or something, but it came off. So, it, you know, it looks like you were totally fine. But, yeah, when I watch back those games, I definitely kind of – because you, you kind of see, like, a lot of goals. It's, like, not just one mistake. It's three, four, five mistakes in a row that, like, lead up to a goal and, and stuff like that. So it's really interesting to be able to kind of see the whole thing and um, maybe just not be as invested as, obviously, like, when you're in the game – you're just on to the next play, on to the next play. Whereas when you watch it back, you can kind of really dissect, okay, the different sort of waves of the game and the different layers within the game. So, Hi, Shane. This is Alonso. Uh, Alonso. Shane, uh, congratulations on your win. And how do you feel in your first start uh, playoff since 2013? And also, if you knew that your passing rate goes above 90%, last game was 93%, is anybody special, too, that you like to pass the ball when you play, like looking for Joao or looking for Lodeiro? Um, well, I think playing in the playoffs, I mean, obviously, it is a little different not having the crowd there. But at the same time, you know, kind of a must-win situation. Obviously, it felt really good to kind of get back out there in a playoff situation and kind of reiterate to myself that I can play at this level um, in the playoffs. So I think that was important for me just to kind of come out and do my job. I mean, at the end of the day, like, that's kind of how my mentality is, is I just got to do my job. I'm not trying to go out there and win the ball game. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that. So if I can just go out there and keep it simple, and that honestly kind of plays into the passing rate as well. I mean, I know I'm not, you know, Tom Brady back there, so I just got to find my guys. I mean, uh, I feel like the one thing that I've been really trying to be intentional about the last few weeks, starting with the Colorado game, really was I feel like I haven't found Jordan as much as I probably should. You know, obviously he's such a threat. So I've been really trying to get him the ball as much as possible. 
And um, I feel like it's been working out pretty good. And just and even if I don't get him the ball, at least seeing where Jordan is, um, being that I'm playing on the left side next to him, I think is really important for me. And, um, yeah, just trying to build that connection with him. Obviously, Nico as well. Um, but it is a little bit more challenging playing those balls into the midfield when it's on my left foot. So um, just trying to develop those relationships. I can actually I have another one. If you, uh, I, we've talked a lot about Alex Roldan's um, emergence this year as a as a right back. Um, I know you played a little bit of right back uh, at at various points in your career. How I don't know. How, what have you thought of his his play back there? And and uh, and is he making that transition look a little easier than than it might really be? I mean, it's definitely not an easy position to play, but I think the one benefit that he has is he's got he's got a great engine, you know, um, sort of like sort of like Christian. I mean, his fitness level is really really high, and that I mean, if you put me out right back right now, I mean, I'd probably need an oxygen tank after the game. So that's probably uh, it would be a tough look for me. But you know, obviously Alex is a is a super fit guy and. He's got he's got a really good delivery of a ball as well. So when he gets a little bit of time and space, he can really whip in a decent delivery. Um, <clears throat> but I think he, I mean he's obviously stepped up huge this year. You know, every time he's played, I feel like he's done really well. And you saw even last game, I feel like there was even times where he was under pressure and he got out of the pressure really well. And I think that's just confidence. You know, I feel like that's just being able to get more games and and doing well while you get those opportunities. And obviously, he's he's just kind of growing and continuing to show, you know, the kind of player he is. Hey, Shane, um, going back to kind of the Tom Brady analogy, but the thing is, is, you've got a lot of different people that are making runs for you, and how easy it is that I know you you talked about Jordan Morris, but you've got a lot of people that are opening up for you for be able to pass from the back to the front. How comforting is that? I mean, it's. I think the key for sure is being able to see that because I, I think early on in the season there was times where I wasn't even looking for that and now sometimes you're not going to be able to get the delivery right or you're not going to be able to hit the pass for whatever reason but when you're seeing it it is a uh, it's definitely like you said very comforting knowing like okay even if I'm under pressure if I just pick my head up I know somebody's going to be an option you know a lot of times JJ likes to come inside and then Alex might be going deep or Kelvin and um, Nico always wants the ball regardless of the situation, which is pretty amazing for me because that's the thing. You just got to look up, try and find Nico. If he's got somebody on him, maybe Jordan, maybe Raul even. So um, I think that is one thing as a center back on this team that is, a, it is a, a real pleasure, you know, having guys like that who just want the ball in any situation. Jao Paulo is the same, always wanting the ball, and uh, it makes my life a lot easier. And the guy behind you obviously is key in that, as in Stephen Fry, right, as being the fulcrum. I mean, how important is his ability to, to help in distribution of the ball? Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably one of Steph's, you know, with shot stopping, I think his distribution is, is probably up there, if not the best in the league for goalies, which um, is, 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 yeah, I mean, again, it's a real pleasure to be able to play with these guys when you got a guy like Steph who can kind of sling a ball out to the fullback when you're under a little bit of pressure or you can give him a ball and he'll one time it through the lines to the midfielder. So I think for, for me, it's all about just kind of composure and seeing the right pass because when you get these guys, the ball with time and space, they're, they're going to hurt the opposition. There's no doubt about that. Hey, Shane, can you hear me? Yep. So um, Dallas will have like a, a week and nine days in total of rest and you will have like a, like a week. Will that be an advantage for them or what, how do you feel in that sense? I mean, I don't think so, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, that's a, it's a, good, that's a good amount of rest for us. Um, we got good, uh, you know, we got a good training session in today. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's the playoffs. Like, you know, we're going to, we're going to, 
get our mentality right. We're going to get our energy levels right. And obviously we're, we're, there's one goal in mind, you know, and that's obviously to win the, the, win a championship. I mean, I don't think two or three or four days, whatever it is, is going to make a big difference unless we were on a two or three day turnaround. Um, and, you know, again, we got top professionals in the team. I, uh, yeah, just to answer your question, no, I do not think that's going to be a big difference. And what do you think there are some areas of, of improvement to, uh, for the game against Dallas? Where do you think you need to improve when, when you will uh, – yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I think honestly, like when I, when I watch back the game against LAFC and just like the way I, you know, we were feeling during the game, I mean, I honestly think it's – our mentality and our energy levels and our focus is, is if, if that's at a high, high level, we're going to be really tough to beat. You know, we're going to be a really tough team to beat when we're playing at our best and we're, you know, putting the team on the back foot, you know, making the dictating the tempo of play. And for us, it's just about that mentality piece, you know, that desire, that, that hunger to kind of up the tempo consistently. Cause obviously there was times against LFC when it, when it drops a little bit and it's the playoffs. So anything can happen. You know, we know that anything can happen no matter who we're going up against, but I, I feel really confident that if we come out with the right energy levels and mentality that we're going to be a tough group to beat. Hey, um, congratulations. First of all, um, on the broadcast, they suggested that with your early slide tackle on Vela, you guys were sending a message that, you know, he was in for a physical night. Was that a conscious decision to send that kind of message or just the way the play developed? I mean, I think before the game, you definitely, you know, you want to go out with that edge. And, and obviously, you know, thinking about the game beforehand, visualizing about the game, definitely wanting to send a message of, you know, I'm, I'm, here, to, I'm here to play, you know. I'm not going to be, you know, backing out of any challenges but it wasn't like oh here comes Vela like let me let me go and try and hammer the guy like it wasn't anything like that I just think like for me personally obviously trying to find that edge and trying to find that that competitiveness is is, is really key and I guess it just kind of worked out that I was able to you know make a play on that on that one occasion but uh I guess yes and no you know obviously yes in the sense of I wanted to go out and and, and and get physical and, and, and not leave anything on the field. But at the same time, it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't lining them up or anything like that. <laughs> right on. Thanks, man. Hey, Shane, that ability to uh, step it up a notch, uh, you talked about an LAFC game. Is that just, just the confidence that comes with that, does it help the fact that the defending champions or does it just because the veteran group that you guys have and they've been there before? or this team's been there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it obviously helps when you're going out with guys who have, you know, been so successful in this league for, for so many years. And I think we've seen it uh, at times this year when we really pick up the intensity levels in games that we can really dominate teams and, and really change games with uh, our commitment levels and, and, and just – yeah, you know, when we when we kind of pick it up that extra little bit. And, uh, I mean, that's the beauty of the playoffs is, you know, you got 90 minutes to kind of just leave it all out there. And, and again, I think um, for me personally, just, you know, trying to do, do, do the same thing, compete with the same mentality. And, uh, you know, if I get the opportunity, just kind of leave it all, all out there. And, and you see with all the games, that's kind of how the games have been going. It's the team that can kind of – go that extra mile, have that extra bit of quality, but also that extra little bit of drive and determination, I think, in these one-off games, it's, it's so critical. So you have played in, uh, with different players in the defensive line with like Arriaga and uh, Jaymar and even Roman Torres. In your opinion, what do you think is the strength of each of them? And who do you like to play the most? Not... Um, just because it's more like uh, your playing style? Um, well, I mean, I think Yaimar obviously is uh, very aggressive and, you know, a, s a physical specimen, wins every duel that you'd hope that he would win. And 
obviously that's a that's really amazing to play with a guy who you really can rely on to to win sort of almost everything um it makes your job a lot a lot easier you know when there's a a play developing and there's a 50 50 ball and you're kind of like well i hope he takes this one and then he does it's like wow that's a that feels good that feels good to be to be back there with that um and obviously i played with javi a few times and I've always really enjoyed playing with Javi as well. You know, he obviously has a, a really good ability to pass out of the back with his left foot. Um, obviously, it's a little bit different because I'm on my right side when I play with Javi, and I feel a little bit more confident playing out from the back. And uh, and with Roman, obviously, I just haven't really gotten a lot of minutes with him, if I'm being honest. You know, we, we, we've, we've barely really played together, so... Um, but, you know, he's obviously won the MLS Cup multiple times and started in finals, played in the World Cup. So I think his resume speaks for itself. Um, but, I mean, I've said this a million times. Like, honestly, like, H Javi and Yaima are obviously very, very good players. And for me, it's just about trying to bring my best every day and, and you know, let it up to the coach to see who plays and, and just compete and, and see what happens. Thank you. Okay, it's Alonso again. Just uh, uh, following uh, Felipe's question, uh, with since you know uh, Jamar Arriaga and uh, Roman Torres all speak Spanish, are you learning like words like behind you, drop it, leave it, man on, step up, or are they learning and they talking to you in English? How is working on the communication? Still a work in progress. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah. I mean, I'm, I'm trying, you know, obviously I'm trying, but um, got a couple words, izquierda, derecha, sale, forget up, and uh, that's about it. Like I said, it's tough in game when Yaimar is trying to tell me something. That's really kind of, it's because I'm trying to listen, I'm trying to process, I got a lot of adrenaline, and uh, yeah, my Spanish dictionary just doesn't work that fast, so we're uh, we're working on it. <laughs> 